helper for some people who are prone to... Right, so you end up starting the day with fears of migraine. I know, I know. Because light stuff and flick and stuff can set a lot of people um, into migraines or epileptic seizures, things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So wouldn't you think they'd come up with something a little bit better than that? I, well, but, you know, it gets your attention. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I have the same thought. I, I um, inexplicably had a delayed flight. Imagine that. Oh, how Which shocking. Which kept me from uh, making my connection oh, how last shocking. week. Yes. Uh, I, I was flying in to, for a quick visit, and... Um, uh, as a result, the, my my connection, which was at one o'clock in the afternoon, you mm-hmm. know, into Green Bay, Wisconsin, and there's several flights into Green Bay after that. Yeah, uh, they rescheduled me for the following day, which for various reasons, one of which was the unreliably the unreliability of our air traffic system. Yeah, you know, I just I got in my car and drove. Yeah. Frankly, I mean, you know, it doesn't take much longer, and it's a whole lot more no, relaxing. It, isn't that amazing to drive from St. Louis to uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin? It actually doesn't take much longer than if you were to put yourself in the uh, unwelcoming hands of our uh, domestic airline industry. Well, given the time allowance that you have to give yourself before right. a flight, you know, no, and then you right. sit there, and then the inevitable... Delays. delays of the flight. Right. You know, it's, no, it's true. I mean, once you start adding up the time, there's it's absolutely true. And at least when you're driving, um, you can have some maintain some control of your environment. You can maintain some <laughs> control. And can I tell you, it's just wonderful to just be encased in a bubble of nobody can get to you. <laughs> well, yes, that is our automobiles. Yeah, Where you can yeah. pick your nose and think nobody sees you. Well, right? you know, and, right? but the fact of the matter is, is um, if you're driving through, you know, across the state of Illinois on the diagonal, there is no one. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's it's. Pre- it was it was enjoyable. I hadn't done it for a while. I forgot how enjoyable it was. Do you listen to music or books or? I did all. Well, sometimes news. I listen to books. This time I. Uh, I um, had a free trial of satellite radio, so okay. I was playing with that a little bit. Although it's sort of unpleasant, you know. It's uh, what do you mean? I have satellite radio because it came well, with the, my car. Well, the uh, the voice quality isn't quite as good on on like PR or something. Huh? I didn't notice that, but you do have a cornucopia of potential uh, things to listen to. I mean, it's just yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. No, that was pleasant, and you do, and you do end up uh, hearing good music that you wouldn't otherwise hear. True, in a Absolutely. very nice, uninterrupted form. Exactly, with no commercial. I don't know, understand why anybody listens to uh, regular uh, music stations anymore, or radio in general. I don't get it, but that's just me. So, um, anyway, Susan, I don't think there's any way around it. I think we have to uh, spend some time uh, looking to our east and uh, to uh, Ukraine and Russia. And, yeah. Um, now, this is really, uh, Crime, the Crimean Peninsula is gone. It is gone. Russia's got it, and they ain't going to well, get it back. Well, you Just know, like Russia gave it to them a while back, and now Russia's taking Take it, it back. back. I know. I know. It turned out it was only as long as we controlled you, you could have it. That is right. And once you started acting uppity like you were, we're taking it back right now. I mean, right. I, okay, so um, the Crimean Peninsula, I mean, that is strategically, obviously, all you have to do is look at a map and see why you would want the Crimean Peninsula. And uh, Russia had it for a long time, obviously, but with the dissolution of the Soviet Union, that's when we won the Cold War, with the dissolution of the Soviet Union, all those uh, Soviet republics (laughs) got independence, Ukraine being one, right? Right. Um, And it hasn't been that long. It seems to me the Russian psyche 
is still, and Putin exemplifies it, really battered and pissed off. Right, and refusing to believe that the alliance isn't still there. Exactly. It's sort of still there in their heads. Right. That's greater Russia to them. That is not. So anyway, all that, uh, I thought, and I only said this yesterday, a caller called in and, and, and suggested that the American response was to all this was sort of hypocritical, and I said that had been my reaction, too. And then there is um, a, a very short letter from a woman in California to the New York Times today where I think she sums it up pretty well. Uh, she says uh, that the outraged reaction of the administration and Congress to Putin sending troops to the Crimean Peninsula seems the ultimate in hypocrisy. The United States did not hesitate to invade, let's see, we'll start a list up here, Grenada, uh, send troops into Haiti, play an active role in fighting in Nicaragua, El Salvador, wage full-scale wars in R Asia, Indochina, uh, let us remember Iraq, Iran, uh, you know, good heavens, uh, Afghanistan, not Iran, I take that back, uh, is... And and then she says, Crimea, on the other hand, is on Russia's border and the site of an important Russian naval base. So the Russians have reason to be... They have assets to protect. That is right, which is more what she's saying is. She's and it's she, always been there. It, I mean, the, the, right. it's strategically important for them because it is a warm water port. Exactly right. And I mean... Excuse me. And also, they do have the fact that at least, what is it, I don't know what percentage of the population is essentially Russian. So they've got a lot more standing, <laughs> seems to me, to go in to Crimea than we had to go into an awful lot of places that we've gone into in my lifetime. No, it, it does seem to be an essentially, you know, this is, this, this is the very definition of, of a an essentially local issue. You know, this is, this is two states settling who is independent of whom or if indeed they are. Yeah. And this skirmish takes effect to find that out. Did you say squirmish? Skirmish. <laughs> Here's a new but word, it is though. Squirmishy. Squirmish. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, my God. There goes a bobcat right, across, right in front of me. Cool. Hey Sue, how how big would you say that bobcat is? Um, he's he's size um, of a la la size of a Labrador size of no, a no much smaller. He's whatever of, the, what I am seeing around here is much smaller. It's like a very very you know it's like it's slightly too big to be a cat, and you have to look. And the oh, way okay. you can tell is by their tails. Their tails are, are very big and thick. bushy. Yeah. So I happened to come across recently a. a a thing where I am uh, in a room uh, with a cougar, <laughs> in a room with a cougar, and it's a young cougar, but it's a big, and I, you know, maybe the, the cougar you're seeing is, you know, a, a feral cougar. This was more of a, it was in a slightly domesticated situation, but it was. And I was trying to do a stand-up, you know, I was with the cougar in my lap. And this guy kept sticking this cougar in my lap. And I'd start by saying, now, so-and-so here might look like a cute, cuddly little house cat, I'd say, as I'm scratching its head. And I could never get beyond that because it would lift one of its huge paws up and, like, slam me in the face with it, you know, like, <laughs> right? <laughs> and we must have done 7,000 takes, and, and I put them all together, because it's funny. It's funny to see constantly, 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 <laughs> such a beautiful animal. Man, and it was purring the whole time. So the head is here, and my mic is, you know, right near it, the head, and you could hear throughout all of this video this, like, unbelievable rumble going on the whole time and it was the cougar purring they are cats they're just cats but yeah left on the outside yeah they got to eat and they'll eat uh, other 
cats, I guess. They eat dogs. They eat anything. Speaking, oh, Susan, how did we get off? Oh, you pulled us off for Ukraine. Wait. Because I, I also do want to talk about nature. Uh, okay, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It was just an involuntary No, of course. I mean, if you see of, it. Ooh, look what, see, now that I don't have a pet anymore. You can love them and not I, worry I about them. I just enjoy yeah. um, ceding my property to the wildlife it, it, that needs support. You know, somebody, uh, you know, you know where I live. And it's a, yes. you know, it's it's in the city. Um, there were three deer in my neighbor's yard. Three deer. Mm -hmm. It was the most upsetting sight I've seen in some time. Yeah, you have to feel sorry for them. What the hell? They had to have crossed a number of streets. I mean, they must have come from uh, Shenley Park, from, from this huge park we have. Excuse me, Frick Park. But I am some, this, I mean, I ain't sitting on Frick Park's uh, doorstep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just was about to say, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, some of the No, you feel I, sorry for them. Oh, gosh, yes. You know, so I, I mean, really, it's, it, 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 okay, I'm, we're, go back to the Ukraine, but anyway. Okay. Oh, and here's another way to sort of get off Ukraine, and because I was reading the science section of the New York Times today, yeah, and they have this big article on Florence Nightingale. Really, I I haven't had time to even look. Okay, well, it's interesting because our sense of Florence Nightingale is what? Give me your sense of Florence Nightingale. Oh, a uh, lady in white sailing uh, with lantern through from cot to cot to tend to uh, right. Sick, yes. sick soldiers and people. Yeah. She's a fascinating character, as it turns out. And I don't know. I thought she was American. She's not. She was English. Yes, she was English. And she was rich. And she was a battle actor. I mean, she was a tough cookie. No, she, she wasn't, worked yeah. very hard to be allowed to do what she wanted, what she saw needed to be done. Well, she was, um, and believe it or not, this is going to go back to Ukraine. I am not kidding you. Okay, good That's for why, you. Yeah, yeah. Hang on there. So um, better than Ellen DeGeneres' segues. Go. Will for it. you stop? <laughs> we'll get there too. So she grew up in like you know Downton Abbey, uh, you know wealth. Yeah. And she was educated at home, and she was very educated. She knew Greek and Latin and all that kind of stuff, and French and German and Italian and music and history. And then she turned 17. And her father said, okay, we got to get you a husband. And she said, no, you don't. And all hell broke loose because in that era, this is like 1840. 40 something. Right. And that was all she was supposed to do is marry. And, and she, she was supposed to get off of her father's doll and onto, onto uh, a, a hopefully wealthy husband's doll. Right, and, a well placed husband's doll. Yeah. And she absolutely did not want to. She was already driven. She wanted to nurse. She wanted to work with sick people. She want, And this is unheard of. Right. And she literally stood up to her father saying, I refuse to marry, and took on all the sanctions he imposed, and whenever she could, ran, ran out to learn as much as she could about nursing and this and that. She kept just sort of educating her, herself. Um, nursing was never something done by a woman of status. Uh, nursing was done by servants. And so this was so unheard of, everything she wanted to, to do. She waged this battle with her father for 15 years, refusing to marry, staying and sort of pushing up against him. And somehow... She turned down every suitor he brought. She refused this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Fifteen years, the father finally threw up his hands. 
All right, do it. Go and do. And he gave her an annuity and sent her on her way. And she immediately built a hospital (laughs) and started implementing some of her ideas. And she revolutionized how how the sick were were treated in hospital totally changed everything. The idea of a hospital as we see it today is really thanks to her because it didn't exist. So anyway, the Crimean War mm-hmm. happened. We're talking right. about Crimea, the horrific Crimean War. I don't know exactly the year. It'd be in the 40s, 1840 something, maybe 50. I don't know. Someone could look it up. And uh, there were, uh, she was actually uh, called by them to come and and somebody there said, can you come here? Can you help us? And it was that that completely revolutionized her ideas of what should happen. She goes there and saw soldiers dying in hospitals, dying more from the hospitals and the care right, than right. from dying of typhoid fever, cholera, dysentery, um, and the, in filthy conditions. Uh, and, and she was stunned. She was freaked by it. And this is what, for the rest of her life, energized her, the horror of that war in Crimea. And I don't know who was fighting that one. But so that's, a, you know, that again shows what a nice little piece of property that must be. Because right. there's been lots of war in Crimea. Well, it's because it's on, always on been what it is. It's a warm weather port. And for in Russia, a cold weather place. And, in a, and for Russia, it's an absolute strategic necessity. necessity. That's why they've got a naval base there. That's right. So I'm not, and again, I and am think not. think of all the places that we have military assets. If you don't think that we move to protect them. Especially. I just think this is essentially a local conflict. It's a family trouble yeah and it's region and and if it's somebody's problem it's europe's because this is europe this ain't right. us and this idea that somehow oh it's obama and this wouldn't have happened if he hadn't this and that and blah 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 that's such bull the fact of the matter is is not too terribly long ago when george w was president uh the russians did the same thing and went into uh georgia yet another of their former uh, satellites and took yeah, and took Russia and took Georgia and J, G, uh, you know W didn't do a damn thing. We didn't do a thing. Call her. Hello, dear. Hi. Hello? Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Cannons to the right of me. Cannons to the left of me. <laughs> that's um. That's the famous poem of the Crimean War. Yeah. During the Light Brigade. Oh, is that, oh the the charge of the Light Brigade is the for the Crimean War. Yes, it is. Okay. It was a futile and uh, incredibly ignorant attempt to charge cavalry against um, cannon. The English cavalry going in, uh, to battle against the Russians. Okay. And they were slaughtered because you don't ride horses up against cannonballs. No, duh. What, do, you know, uh, do, you know, do you know what the year, uh, year was? But, well, I, I was calling in to say, I think I... I, I um, I don't. Let me start off by prefacing this, this by saying I don't think we should do anything more than we are doing with what is going on in the Crimea and the Ukraine. Right. Um, but I do think this is a larger problem. This has too many very very close parallels to what happened pre World War II. I yes yes. You mean with the Sudetenland? With the Sudetenland. When Germany with went in there. The Sudetenland and with... Um, Ethnic Germans. You know, they went in with the same kind... being yeah. locked up. I know. And with... I after know. the Sudetenland was annexed, uh, them saying, the Nazis saying, well, you know, there are insurgents from Poland coming into the Sudetenland and killing, killing German soldiers who are protecting German-speaking people in the Sudetenland. Right. Um, but here... What, Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was just going to say, but here's the thing. Uh, since World War II, it seems to me that the nations of the world have established a, a lot of 
um, systems where there are opportunities to keep this from getting out of hand like that. And also, I don't think Russia, which is in some ways a failed state, (laughs) in some ways, uh, is in a position to start acting like, you know, Germany in the in the 30s. I. I don't know. But I yes, I see. It's always troublesome because these huge wars start in Europe and they start with these little seeming neighborhood conflicts, you know. With well, and, the, and these little mm. these little men who harbor a grudge yes. because of a previously lost war, whether it was a Cold War or a hot war. Right. Putin came out on the losing end of the Cold War. Yes. Let's not forget his background. No, and and, and, and he he's very uh, upset very. about that. That's right. And you know, you combine that with his obvious need to per, to to prove his machismo, yeah. riding around on horses without a shirt on, and and tranquilizing tigers, and all of those other things. And I agree with you that you know a lot of people are banking on the fact that economics will will put Russia back in line. But I don't think we're dealing with Russia here. And let's not forget, too, the Russian people have a certain sense of self that has been, um, that they want to regain. Well, that's right. So there's this, that's right. So there's a lot of emotion, a lot of Russian nationalism. He's the type of man who would let worrying about economics and his country being driven into the ground stop him from proving what he thinks he needs to prove. Well, I don't know. Look at all the money he just spent to get some uh, good publicity for Russia with the Olympics, which he pulled off, and then why? And then immediately turns around and sort of wipes that all out by, which is by a doing perfect, this. It's a, it's a, you know, it proves my point that he is irrational. Economics doesn't He'll spend all that money and try to look good, but then at the turn of a, turn of a dime or whatever the phrase is, He'll send troops into a country, and, you know, they could have kept that port. They could keep that port. Nobody was threatening that port. But they were saying, you know, and that, that's another thing that, that, that shows a pre-World War II mindset. They're saying that right-wingers took over the government, and right-wingers are threatening the, the ethnic Russians and Russian speakers in the Ukraine. There's a, there are a lot of parallels. All right. And just to say that, that fear of economic... Um, collapse in Russia would stop Putin. I think he's too much of a loose cannon to bank on. Okay. That. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the Let's comment. He already invaded Georgia. Yeah, I know. And we didn't do anything. I just want, and we had we, a Republican we, president. We can do other than I know, but, but to other listen than to shake ju- a wag a finger yeah. at him Fine. and hope that hope that economic economics are going to keep him in his place. Yeah. But when you're dealing with somebody that doesn't really give a shit, yeah, that's not okay. easy to bank on. Okay. Thanks for the you know, call. It, Appreciate it, it. it. There's nothing we can do. Okay. John McCain can scream all and yell, right. Lindsey Graham can scream and yell all they want, but there's nothing we can do. Okay. Short of, of, no, no, of going put at a it, period on going it. into a hot war with them. Put up. Yeah. We got which, is, which is completely hey. insane that they. Hey. You know, and, and thank God Obama's taking a long perspective on this. All right. He's going to spin himself out and. and okay. Angel. Things will work themselves out. Thank so. you. Okay, Th- guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, by it. the way, at this point, in, at this point in the history of nature, deer are just like large rats. I disagree, but go away. You can't talk about that now. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> rats. Poor little deer. Jesus. <laughs> See how much control I have of this program. Jesus. I I I try and shut up when you tell me to. Yes. So we have to take a break, but Susan uh, got a funny email here that I got to share with you really quickly. Am I the only person Anita writes who, when first starting to watch your program, wondered why you had a picture of Sarah Gilbert on the little stand behind you? <laughs> I've never gotten Sarah Gilbert before. After, but I do look like Sarah Gilbert in that picture. <laughs> anyway, she did. After noticing that it was only displayed on Tuesdays, I realized finally it was Susan. Yeah, here's Susan. She's way back there. We'll put her up here. There. 
Who's Sarah Gilbert? Is she on Little House on the Prairie or something? She was, Sarah Gilbert was, oh, I think. Oh, in the, Roseanne. Yeah, the second daughter in the Roseanne. The daughter. Susan's better looking than Sarah Gilbert. But she's, but they're both smart as blazes. Sarah Gilbert uh, went on to Harvard from there, I believe. Right. So these are two smart women, but Susan's prettier. Don't you Thank agree? You do. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Or, or at one time in my life, I was. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. Back in the day, man, we were babes. We were babes, and we got the photos to prove it. We got to take a break. Email your questions and comments to lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call Lynn at 412-316-3381. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for an interview with comic Jim Norton, Pompey, and Sierra Baptista. Plus, don't miss our annual summer camp guide. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com, your smartphone at citypapermobile.com, and at the iPhone App Store and Google Play. Welcome to today's lottery drawing. And today's winning numbers are not yours, not yours, and another number that's not yours. And the final number is not yours. When it comes to having money, don't rely on luck. Brew your own coffee at home instead of buying that latte. Brown bag it to work instead of ordering it. Go to feedthepig.org for more free ideas on how to save. Feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. Oh, yeah, here we are back again. Sarah Gilbert and me. Um, Ray writes, ladies, the real hypocrisy is that to this day, the English... Now, Ray, so you're going to point fingers at the, what are the English doing? They're minding their own business. Okay, wait, he says no. The real hypocrisy is that to this day, the English still hold on to Northern Ireland for the same reasons Russia claims they're protecting the Russian loyalists in Crimea. Is that true? Yeah, well, and yeah, where was I reading that... um Sean Connery was... Uh, yeah, it says it's time for the Scots. Yeah, for a Welsh secession movement. Oh, Welsh. Oh, okay. Because Scotland's thinking about it. Okay, so right. And then he says, Ray says, the English infected the world with do as I say, not as I do, by virtue of having the best navy the planet had ever seen. Why else do we love Shakespeare, but not the Mahabharata? Okay, you're going to have to explain that last line to me. Who's the Mahabharata? Somebody as great as Shakespeare that we don't know because we're Western? Apparently. I mean, maybe it just proves itself, as it were. Yes. What is that called, when it proves itself? Well, it's it's the thing in law, res ipsa loquitur. The thing speaks for itself. Yes, that's it. Ipsa loquitur. Race ipsa. Lockwitter. Race, Ipsa, Lockiter. Why else do we love Shakespeare but not the Mahabharata? What is some kind of a Hindu person? Who must have Well, maybe because Shakespeare is only slightly easier to understand. (laughs) (laughs) We sort of speak the same language as Shakespeare. (laughs) Sort, kind of, but not really. I remember when, we, when you're first introduced to Shakespeare, you think, what the fuck? And then, little by little, you start to, you know, be able to parse it a bit, but not, I still can't read it without every two seconds going down to a footnote. I mean, if I well, don't have a... Well, until the, if there comes a point, it's, a, it's, it's, it's sort of like when you exercise or run, you hit the wall and you go through it. There comes a point when if you just sit there and keep reading it, all of a sudden you enter the world and it yes. makes sense. If you just relax. Right. Yeah, if you but, just relax and, ta- and just allow it, uh, give yourself over to the rhythm and the meter and the music, and pretty soon the meaning follows. Well, I think also if you just watch a good, bunch of good actors actually saying it and doing it, it all becomes pretty clear. 
but there's a whole bunch of stuff you really don't know. Anyway, Joseph uh, it, it keeps writing that uh, that his family is in Lithuania and is becoming very concerned about the Russian armed forces along their border as well as in Poland. It's becoming very scary for these people. Um, yeah, I mean, I can understand why the um, the you know all these countries that have known Russian aggression are very. You know, is this deja vu to them, and it's very unsettling. Right, and they and they should. I mean, if they are independent states, then they have a duty to protect themselves, I suppose, or choose not to. But it is not essentially our duty. Exactly that we know. It's not. It's not. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, caller, go uh, ahead. Hello, I'm just calling to do you a small favor. Clarence, how sweet of you. Okay, what I'm going to do. I'm going to ramble on, and you're going to hang up on me mid-sentence, okay? Be, I want you to practice this. Okay, now, so wait. You think I should be able to do that? Just yeah. hang up. <laughs> so, okay. All right. You know, that's what, that's what nasty talk show hosts do, but I used to do that, didn't I? Yeah, yeah well, you tried three or four times to, to cut him off. Yes. But I don't know whether he couldn't hear you. That's what I'm thinking. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I don't think he could hear you. No. But, you know, so. there's a delay. So he can't hear you. Yeah. You can explain why you hanged up on him. Hung, hung up. up on him, rather. <laughs> and um, then when he turns his radio back on, he can hear it. He can hear you okay. say, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but I had to cut you off. I see. And so, so I'm, I'm, I'm continue to babble. At some point, you should be hanging up on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, okay. And sister, if wait, you wait, wait, it, wait, uh, wait. You know, then I could say to you, you have hanged up on him. Oh, really? Is that the way it works? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, so now I've ran out of things to say, but I'm going to continue talking until the phone cuts off. Oh, you hang up on him! <laughs> we did, but it didn't. Yeah. Okay. He's gone. Clarence. Ah. Uh, Clarence. But Clarence, we don't want to hang up. See, on I mean, <laughs> I used to have. I. Oh no, he's calling back. Hello. Hey, listen. If Clarence has a problem. If I'm running on, babbling on, uh, some of the conversations I've heard him call in with are not... <laughs> we just cut him off, too. <laughs> that was the original caller. Well, of course, he was insulted. I don't blame no, him. No, no. Why should he be insulted? Because Clarence made clear that he thought he couldn't hear me he trying to... He couldn't hear. Right. So we weren't saying any... Thing, but now he sounded angry. That's true. Yes. Okay, PJ, calm down. Take a deep breath. We appreciated your call. No, we're just trying to have an entertaining program here. That's all my. That's all I'm doing. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, the, the the use of the phrase babbling. Now babbling hey. on. Okay. All right. Do, can I say goodbye now? Can I? He hung up on me. Look now what you we're... did, Clarence. Clarence! <coughs> <laughs> Clarence is laughing very hard in Cannonsburg. Apologies. Apologies all around. Jeez, guys. Except it's all Clarence's fault. It is? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Because what we were, what you were being, dear sister, uncharacteristically, is polite. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to upset anybody. PJ, Why I didn't would you want, want to upset, upset anybody. I don't want to. Well, you don't. But you know, you and I have a talent. We just, we just do it naturally. Yeah, pretty much. But PJ, hey, buddy, it's a show. It's just, you know, yeah, I, it was funny because I, oh, you no. couldn't hear me. Oh dear God in heaven! Hello. I'm not laughing. <laughs> Get off! No, no, I, 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 you know, I'm actually sorry that I offended him. I didn't mean. No, you did I offend said, him. I'm going to babble on. No, to hang up on me. Okay. I like, don't think if he goes back later on tonight, you know, or you know, when you when you re-air, yes, he can see he'll be able to hear that you were trying to tell him to, goodbye to, 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 to stop him. Yes, you know, and and he probably, like I said, he probably couldn't hear you. <laughs> right. So you so at some point you have to hang up. 
I gotcha. And you yeah, did, I didn't mean, if I implied that he was babbling, <laughs> I'm sorry, whoever you are. <laughs> that, that wasn't my intent. Okay. Huh? Now, is everybody happy? <laughs> because this is like the Soviet Union overtaking yeah. the crust. <laughs> is everybody Crimea okay? River. Is every <laughs> Crimea River? Yeah. Who did that, you just say that? that? Joke? Yes. That's a good joke. Crimea. <laughs> hey, Criminy Pete. That wasn't bad. Okay. Okay, get out of here. You can hang up on me. I'm not going to hang up until you hang up on me. All so right, all right. See, I don't have the button, so it's hard. We got... Ha ha! Jess isn't here today. Carlo is here, and he's too is an excessively polite human being, and it runs counter to everything his mom taught him about how you treat people. Well... Tell him that this is a he, he, this is a guillotine, and he be the executioner. That's right. You spare nobody. <laughs> All right. Well, Susan, this show's getting out of control. It totally. That's um, what I said. Okay, here's Gigi on bobcats and cougars. First of all, I was happy to hear your sister say she saw a bobcat. I think she said a cougar. Same thing. Does the same thing. I said a bobcat. You said a cougar. Oh, you said bobcat? But I think mm-hmm. they're the same thing. They are neat. She says, however, maybe I misheard you, but I thought you referred to it as a cougar. Oh. Cougars are the largest wild cats in North America, weighing up to 140 pounds. Oh, they're not the same thing. No, bobcats, this is a little critter. Yeah, she says bobcats weigh 16 to 28 pounds. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what this guy looks like. Okay, he so, looks like a cat until you look at his face, and then he is clearly a wild animal. Okay, okay. And then you look down, and the stub of his tail is much thicker than a normal cat, and it's wider and it's flatter. Okay, okay. So she says, your sister's right. You see one, and you do do a double take because you think, that's too big to be a house cat. So, no. So, clearly, no. I had a cougar on my lap. I had a pet. I mean, I had a young cougar about eight months old on my lap and it was a big hunk of beautiful stuff yeah gorgeous mm-hmm. no well, i'm trying to guys aren't so gorgeous and i wouldn't want them on my lap okay okay oh the <laughs> cougar was so be- okay so bobcat's different than a cougar i thought there was saying yeah. oh wait but there's something a cougar is also called is that a the puma. same as a puma yeah no this is just, this is a bobcat. It's, that's what it is. No, I know yours is a bobcat, but what's a puma? I think a puma might be is a cougar. Uh, the, the uh, California variation of, of a, cougar. a cougar or vice versa. They're different varieties, okay. but I think they are essentially the same animal. Okay. A bobcat, but I might be wrong. A bobcat's not going to kill a person, but a cougar he's is. Gonna, he's going to eat an awful lot of wildlife. Yes. Okay. And that brings us to wildlife, which I have I bothered the audience about my my new addiction yet? I don't know. I can't remember if I have. Susan, did I bother you about this? The the eagles? No, but you know, one of the prime eagle watching places is about ten miles from me on the Mississippi. It's just no, it's it's my house. Here, I got it. It's on. What happens is. There's a nesting pair of bald eagles um, in, no, not in my house, in <laughs> in Pittsburgh on the river, and there is a incredible high-resolution camera on another tree that is looking right down into that nest. And it's on 24-7, live feed. In the day, it's all in color. At night, it goes to black and white. But the camera's so good, even in pitch dark blackness, you do see what's going on in that nest. And I am addicted. They're sitting right now on three eggs. Those eggs are going to be hatching. And I think about three or four weeks, three weeks maybe, four weeks, 
I cannot wait. I am so into it. And I'm learning about ball. When, is, when are you ever able to have a, a, a seat uh, at at seeing above the airy yes and yes. you know what they, they say that very rarely <laughs> very rarely above the airy right right so they say that the um the diameter of a eagle's nest is six to what 11 feet that's hard right. to, wow Anyway, I was very worried. We had a pretty big snowfall on Sunday night, Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday, whatever it was. And, man, I would say, oh, my God, how is the eagle doing with all that snow? And, you know, sure, the, the, the nest is, you know, is filling up with snow. The eagle's sitting there with snow coming down. And, you know, but, God, they know what they're doing. They are so wondrous to watch this. It's just wondrous. And they take turns. They mate for life. They mate for 30 years. And so one of them's on the nest, on the eggs, and then the other flies back, and a changing of the guard takes place, and the other one flies off, and the settles on the eggs. And it's so fascinating to watch them settle on the eggs because they do this weird, like, little wiggling their little behinds. Right. They, and they... You know what I decided it was, Suze? It was akin to taking a comforter, a downfilled comforter. And plumping it up. Exactly. That's right. They're, so, they're making sure that their belly fat is evenly distributed around each egg. And also that each feather, that there's as much air and insulation and whatever right, they're right, making. Right, right, They're fluffing everything and up. And so they're doing this. <laughs> And they do it and do it and do it. And then they very carefully sit. And then every once in a while they'll get up and they maybe will move the eggs a little bit and rearrange them. And there was one night where a raccoon popped up into the picture trying to get an egg. And that was amazing. So anyway, I'm just telling you, I am so loving watching the natural world. And that will last until... I see them drop a baby rabbit in the nest. Well, right. And I rip mean, its head and, off. And, and yeah. that is precisely why I am loath to replace my dog, who you know, free, who was attacked by coyotes twice in my fenced-in yard. You know, it's just um, so to be able to just luxuriate in one of the benefits of living, you know, in a place that's heavily wooded. Is that I get to I get owls and raccoons and turkey and deer and bobcats and you know and whatever else just lives in nature and it's um, I like sharing my my land with those inhabitants they're denizens as well yeah yeah no I absolutely agree P J by the way has emailed. Um, that all is right with the world because the UPS man just delivered his Godzilla mask, which he has taken a picture of. And indeed, there is a mask of Godzilla, which has just been delivered to PJ. Oh, glad the day's looking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. PJ, what the hell is that for? Don't call and tell me. Email me. I'm just kidding. Just kidding, You're buddy. Just pushing it. <laughs> okay, get to, I, we got to get us. We got to get our break in here, and uh, we shall return momentarily. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen live. BargBargains.com is your best bet for great deals in the Berg. Log on today for exclusive bargains from your favorite local restaurants like Blue Line Grill, Atria's, Fair Day, Hokkaido, and The Colony. Plus discount tickets to the Symphony. The all-new BargBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains, BargBargains.com. Welcome to Move Time Radio, presented by the Arthritis Foundation. And we're smack dab in the middle of our dance-a-thon to fight arthritis pain. Me, I've been grooving for 10 hours straight, baby, but I'm a boogie machine. See, movement is just one of the ways to help fight osteoarthritis pain. Another is weight loss. You get rid of just one pound. That's four pounds of pressure off each knee. For more information on managing pain, visit fightarthritispain.org. Then meet me on the dance floor. This message brought to you by the Arthritis Foundation and the Ad Council. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. 
All right, Obit of the Day, Justin Kaplan. Uh, he was a Pulitzer Prize winning biographer, Mark Twain, other people. He was really a good writer, obviously. <laughs> but then later in life, he became the editor of uh, Bartlett's Quotations. Can you, imagine, oh. can you imagine having that power? And he freaked a lot of people out because he took a lot of old stuff out, flowery, crappy poetry. He just... And then he made room for uh, Kermit. A more diverse representation. Like Kermit the Frog. Right. And um, and Woody Allen. The Woody Allen quote is, um, it's not that I'm afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> And Kermit, we know what that one is. It's not easy being green. Got it. Right. Although it's quoted as it's not that easy being green. Well, that's probably then correct. Okay. And then <clears throat> even even uh, Cary Grant got in Hit with this quote. Everybody wants to be Cary Grant. Even I want to be Cary Grant. That's from Cary Grant. Well, that makes sense. That's, yes. that's a very concise statement of don't confuse me with the character you see on the screen. Exactly. Exactly. And um, anyway, several uh, people, uh, when the first edition that uh, Justin Kaplan um, edited came out, went ballistic, and they were all conservatives. And they said he was just a liberal, and he was knocking out all of these. Charlton Heston complained. That Kaplan was now, through Bartlett's quotations, advancing a liberal agenda. <laughs> and well, because Kermit's proof. That's proof. Well, what pr- was proof to Charlton is that he did not include enough quotes from Ronald Reagan. And uh, Mr. Kaplan responded to Charlton Heston by saying, I did Mr. Reagan a favor, no, a great kindness, by not doing so. Obviously a slap at Reagan, which I don't think is necessarily warranted, because he said some things that definitely... He was a great... He was a great... He was a he great, was a great communicator. Person for his viewpoint. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if there's one thing I can give the guy, it's that he knew how to sell you something. Exactly right. And no, politics should not in any way play into who gets in... To, oh. to something like that. Okay, so Susan, I, I, I saw this, and I, I just, I'm so... Did you ever see a movie that came out last year or, or, or called Olympus Has Fallen? Mm-mm. Of course you didn't. No one in their right mind would have. It was one of those movies, you know, where someone takes over the White House and blows it up and all that. Oh, no, really. I absolutely would not have seen that. Okay. Okay. Well, they had a... a um, uh, an advertisement for it, a commercial that aired on TV that um, started with that that tone that you hear for um, emergency broadcasts. Yeah. And so they're, essentially their trailer starts with this tone and then a picture coming up of the White House in flames surrounded, you know, by terrorists and then what uh, part of War of the Worlds didn't they get? Exactly. And on the screen is, this is not a test. Ah! I'm sorry, well, I missed isn't it. Isn't that a FCC violation? Um, here is the headline. Fictional disaster made to look real draws FCC fine. Yes. Oh, okay. So the FCC, it took them a while. This happened in March of 2013. On Monday, the commission uh, leveled fines totaling almost $2 million on, and here's who they find, Comcast, Viacom, and Disney for willfully and repeatedly violating federal law by carrying that commercial. But you know, for them, it should have been more considering the plaintiff. Yeah, I know. I mean, the like, defendant. Yeah, it's like pennies. But here's the other thing it, may, it makes me think of. You know how you're driving in your car? Driving in my car. Yeah? 
and then all, yeah. all of a sudden... You hear a siren, and you, and you veer, and it's on the radio? Yes! You hear a siren. I right. hate that. There is no... Why, where's the FCC on that? that there well, is I have, no, I've long thought that, that there should be some rules about what gets played on the radio. If there's a siren in it, it can't be played. It is absolutely a road hazard, because if you're paying attention... You immediately, you know, right. look for the vehicle, maybe veer out of the way. You right. don't know. Exactly right. And there are some songs that have them, and there are some Commercial. commercials that have them. And when you hear that, it's an imme- I mean, assuming you're a responsible driver, you're immediately, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And how is that not a hazard? And why is, are you allowed to do that? I think it's the same thing. I do think it's the same thing. Well, where's the, f- is the FCC? I don't know. No one's complained. Oh, heck. People have to have. I'm complaining right now. Yeah, but not to the proper authority. <laughs> all right, all right. No, what happens is you veer or you react the way you react. You realize it's on the radio and you go, I hate that. Why is that allowed? And then you go on. And then there's another one, sort of like a television station commercials in which all of a sudden you hear... Uh, something that sounds like a real scary bulletin, and what they do is they play it and then say, "We have the best on the scene news." You know, but but right, right. You know, uh, okay, caller, caller, hello, uh, hello, hey, hello. Hey, uh, you're talking about that Olympus has fallen, right? Yes. The the with the, that signal, there was a fine if issued by the FCC for that. Yes, we know. That's what I was saying. The FCC. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you were saying where are they at and why haven't they done No, 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 no. <laughs> they... Sorry, I'm not paying attention. You apparently are not paying I'm enough. Sorry. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, Susan, um, I'm not really talking about the Academy Awards here, but I, there's another piece I saw in the Wall Street Journal today that I want to bring to everybody's attention. Um, if you watch the Academy Awards, you saw a lot of Samsung commercials. Uh, Samsung Electronics spent uh, about $20 million on ads. And I think the Olympic uh, cost of an ad is is the second most pricey under Super Bowl? Might be. It's I up there. Think. Yeah, because you know you have this huge, huge audience. So... Um, For no particularly good reason, I might add. <laughs> well, it's a tradition. And I we mean, like, I just watch because I've always watched. And right, every me too. Year I go, why? why am I watching? I know. Because we like to ogle the pretty people and pick, pick at them. I think, I think that's what it is anyway. Um, because it's not a great show. Anyway, Samsung paid 20 mil to uh, run during the Academy Awards. Now, when Ellen DeGeneres took that selfie yeah. with all those stars, you saw, did you see that one? Bradley yeah. Cooper, Meryl Streep, Brad Pitt. I thought that was one of the cute, uh, cute moments of the thing. Actually. That was one of the cute moments of the thing, and I know it looks spontaneous, but guess what? It wasn't. That was planned... Uh, to show off because the what she did is she handed a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 to Bradley ah, Cooper. Ah, product placement. Uh, yeah. And here's here's the way it works. She had come up with the idea, in the, like in the week before the... She said, I think I'd like to do something with selfies during... And so immediately... Uh, you know, Samsung comes in and they showed her, they gave her all this stuff and how you use it. And they said that part of the ad buy was that Samsung would be integrated into the show. So I just wanted to tell you. Well, uh, now that isn't one of my favorite moments. (laughs) Just shows you what good actors those people are. Well, no, they might not have known. She knew. She knew she was going to do. What was cute about it was the spontaneity with which the actors joined in. Right. Particularly on the second one, 
when when she was saying, why weren't you in the picture to some guy? And he said, you didn't ask me. And she goes, oh, well, let's do it. And Brad Pitt jumps up again. <laughs> I don't think I remember that. Now, who was, this is a question. Who was that Liza Minnelli? Yes, and that was one of the only jokes that really made me roar when she when she told us she was, that she said that's really the best Liza Minnelli you know drag costume I've ever seen. Congratulate the costume I've ever seen. Congr- oh no, that's the best Liza Minnelli impersonation I've ever seen. Or something, but she did say sir. something drag or something, and she did say sir. She and said, I'm sir, right. and I'm looking at that person and I'm not seeing Liza Minnelli. I well, did not what, realize that's what plastic surgery both well, but it was horrifying. Does for you. It did not even look like her. Oh and I think cheek implants as well. I mean I thought, no, she just she just looks like she has a I shall we use the term death mask on but, but a mask done by a not particularly talented, talented artist. Yeah. No, because I, I, I was confused. I'm, you know, you got it. I'm confused. I'm thinking, who is that? Per- why was that? Per- who? And for that matter, why was Liza Minnelli having such a good aisle seat? Was she up for something? The three Minnelli, well, two, two and a half Minnelli children, Liza, Lorna, and Lorna's brother, I don't know, Shmuel, were, um, were there because um, Pink sang Over the Rainbow badly. They were there because Pink was going to sing Over the Rainbow? Yes, yeah, it was a tribute to the 75th anniversary of Wizard of Oz or something. Oh, see, I don't know. So, yeah, no, she looks horrific. Just saying. But that's another reason like we, why we like to watch, because you can see all those... Why ba- not to get plastic surgery? Man, I got to tell you, I was at the synagogue the other night and I bumped into somebody I hadn't seen in about 30 years and oh my god she had that 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 death mask face right I thought oh god but I didn't say that I smiled and said well hi as I'm thinking you look so young I know as the bubble over my head is saying jeez what the f*** did you do leave it alone just Oh, my God. People are nuts. I understand the inclination. I really do. I totally get it. There are many totally. things that I would oh. fix. You oh, know, God, I would you know, do my ugh. neck. I'd have a chin implant. Yeah. I'd, you know, I remove would pull the wrinkles around my mouth that yeah. have inexplicably, you know, shown up. I can't talk this morning. Have shown up. I, yeah, but, me too. But you know what? what? What for? You just end up looking like a not very good version of your, your old younger self. self. Not your young self. And who you're your kidding? Old self. And who do you think you're kidding? Huh? Not me. So, just saying. Anyway, Suze. They could put the money away. It's, you know, it's expensive. <clears throat> yeah, think of the good stuff you could do with that money. I mean, sure, I'd like fat sucked here, put there, and things pulled. and bleh, bleh, bleh. But at some point, I mean, who, I'm serious, who the hell do you think you're kidding? We you're going to wake up just as dead someday. Just as dead someday. And in fact... You're not allowing nature to make you what you're... It's fascinating to watch yourself disintegrate. And you are missing that experience. And you're taking huge medical risks. And you're taking the, huge the medical risks for it. Reasons. I mean, it but really... anyway, dear sister, yes? it's 10.01 and I've got a life. <laughs> All right, so you want me to cut you off? Cut her off! <laughs> There's Susan. She's gone. And as for me, like I don't have a life, huh? I'm gone too. Tomorrow.
Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.